Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jim Houts. I'm director of sales for Summit Anesthesia Solutions, a division of molecular imaging products. We're here in the heart of the Pacific Northwest in downtown Portland, Oregon. And we're here at Oregon Health Sciences University, which is a med medical school teaching hospital. Uh, we're here as guests of Dr. Kim Saunders, who is director of comparative medicine here at OHSU. And she's given us the authorization to use her protocols and her equipment for this demonstration of inhalant anesthesia for research investigators. The purpose of this training video is to give you folks as investigators, regardless of your experience and expertise in inhalant anesthesia systems, a very broad overview of the inhalant anesthesia systems and look at the components and give you a, a short course in how to anesthetize the subjects that you need to anesthetize to do your procedures. We suggest that any of your inhalant anesthetic procedures at your workplace be either conducted by a licensed veterinarian or under the direct supervision of a licensed veterinarian. I give classes all across the country in inhalant anesthesia systems and I often get asked this one question. Someone will invariably say, what are we trying to do here? And I'll try to give you a very succinct uh, answer to that question. We are trying to deliver a sublethal dose of a toxin to an animal to render it recumbent and non-responsive to pain stimuli. And there's a flip side to this, and that is that we want that animal to recover relatively uneventfully such that we can use that animal for future studies. And now I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Kim Saunders. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce to you a very valuable asset to the research community. This is Dr. Kim Saunders. Dr. Saunders is Director of Comparative Medicine here at Oregon Health and Science University. Dr. Saunders is a veterinarian and a diplomat of the American College of Laboratory Animal Medicine. Uh, Dr. Saunders and I were comparing notes on the past experiences with uh, not only inhalant anesthetics but with injectables and just kind of coming up with some ideas that were benefits of using the current inhalant anesthetic isoflurane over either injectables or some of the previous inhalant anesthetics. I, you probably can't tell, but I've been in the business now 36 years, and I know I look younger than that, but I've had the opportunity to see so many changes in this industry. I've seen us go from ether, which was used as a drop technique for anesthetizing animals in a bell jar. We uh, know that ether is no longer approved for use by OSHA here in the United States because it's so flammable and explos it can be explosive. And the technicians that used ether usually would complain if they were honest with me and say at the end of the day they'd have headaches and they'd go home and they could smell, their spouse could smell the ether coming off, <laughs> breathing off from uh, being stored in their fat. Uh, I remember uh, metaphane being used and metaphane is no longer approved for use here in the United States but it is so hepatotoxic and so renal toxic. I know investigators today who were very cavalier about using metaphane back in the old days in a bell jar and on a cotton swab and they were breathing this inhalant anesthetic and now they have some problems with their liver as a result of it and it's a true thing. But with isoflurane, it's just amazing. They can't show any of those incriminating hepatotoxicities or renal toxicities with respect to ISO and some of the benefits of using inhalant over an injectable are these. It's so easy to titrate the dose. We can go for hours and hours of anesthesia without hardly moving the dial of the vaporizer at all. The animal is stable, is in the surgical plane of anesthesia and recovers so quickly, usually in less than two minutes, that it's entirely remarkable. And the inhalant anesthetic is also quite easy to induce. It takes less than two minutes to go from the ambulatory stage to the anesthetized stage. We don't have to have drug logs. We don't have to uh, monitor uh, how much anesthetic uh, we use. Uh, the investigator has two main benefits. 
we know that there's less handling of the animal with uh, the inhalant anesthetic. And uh, we hear it all the time that after they've switched to using inhalant anesthetics, they don't have to sit there for hours to watch their animal recover from injectables. So there's a lot of real benefits, and it's well documented that the current inhalant anesthetic isoflurane uh, can uh, really reduce the morbidity of these uh, subjects that we're anesthetizing and the mortality of the animals that we're anesthetizing. And when I, I know I've uh, kind of taken up this section a lot, Dr. Saunders, and I don't mean to, to uh, take over your uh, portion of this presentation, but I'm really interested as your uh, expertise as a veterinarian to understand some of those nuances with respect to what we call the art of inhalant anesthesia. And if you don't mind sharing some of those thoughts with me, I'll, I'll be quiet for a minute. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. So the one thing you need to remember whether you're using um, an inhalant anesthesia or injectable is that you need to be paying attention to your patient. Um, even though you're focusing on doing the surgery or doing the procedure, the patient is the most important thing, and so it's important to, to watch to make sure that they're breathing normally, um, that they're uh, you know anesthetized adequately, and each individual or each animal is an individual and should be treated as an individual and watched as an individual. Whether you have a brown mouse or a white mouse, um, you know it's not always going to be the same. You need to um, take into consideration their age, whether you have a neonatal animal or a geriatric animal, they may react differently to the anesthesia. Knockout animals, uh, other kinds of transgenic animals, again, they may react differently to the anesthesia. So you need to keep a good eye on, on what they're doing during the procedure. And it's really important, and what I often tell people to do is just to try the anesthesia before you actually get too involved in the surgery or the procedure on a few of your research subjects so that you know how they react, so that there will be no um, surprises when you actually go to do, to do your surgery. And again, um, it's very easy to control uh, the isoflurane with the vaporizer, turn it up, turn it down as needed, and it's easy to watch your patient and, and make sure that they're under an adequate plane of anesthesia and, and breathing normally. Thank you very much for those thoughts. I really appreciate it. And on top of that, you have been so great to work with here. I thank you very, very much for sharing your facility with us, for allowing us to use your protocols, for allowing us to use your animals, and most of all, for your trust in me so that we can come up with a training program that will help and benefit investigators all over the United States. And I, I really sincerely appreciate that. Thank you very, thank very you. much. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. My pleasure.